Please welcome Meek Mill. And I heard y'all like, yo was watching uh, the Nicki video in there, right? Yeah, Anaconda. we watched Andy kind of video like 55,000 times in general. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to hear a nigga screaming all this crazy shit about the girl I like and not say nothing, just standing there listening, looking at I never even really told him, but I used to be talking to him on the phone at that time. It was like nine months ago, we was on the phone every day. Yeah, I think that's what's confusing about the time. I said, you came out of jail, all of a sudden Nicki Minaj is your girlfriend. Like, how does that happen? Like, yeah, how you... it just ain't happened overnight. Yeah. You guys were friends for a long time. Yeah, but around that period right there, it was a dramatic change. Yeah, how do you do that? Like, it seemed like the, that connection grew with you being incarcerated. Like, was that a key to, to the point that this led to the relationship, you think? Yeah, it was a part of it. You know, she was talking to me while I was in jail. She was holding me down. She ain't never miss a call. You know what I'm saying? Every day she was holding it down. So, you know, when I came home, it just took things to like an extra another level. Yeah. You don't really find too many ride or die chicks out there, right? But she's coming off a very long relationship. So if people feel like, well, was me being upstanding with the situation? Like, were you friends with old boy or ex man? Like, you know, how did that situation? Play stuff out that you guys ended up. You doing. know, that was her life. She wasn't happy with what she had going on. I guess they was going through their little things. I can't really speak on it because I wasn't there, but yeah. they was going through their things. And you know, people make decisions in their life. And nobody can't tell you what decision to make. You know and I'm saying it's Meek Millie, too. Meek Millie, I guess. <laughs> what would y'all pick? Shaka. <laughs> Do you not like the way he's kind of reacted to it? Like in terms I don't really of pay attention to that, man. I'm in another world. I'm trying to get this money. I don't really be nah. paying attention. Niggas be talking on Twitter and Instagram and all that in real life. We don't pay attention to that, man. We go get money. That's all we do. We like to get money, party, have fun. If I had to argue up with the people that be saying shit on Instagram and Twitter on the internet, I'd be arguing all day. Yeah. I know y'all seen me do it before. Sometimes people just get to me. Like yeah. I go look at their page and see their profile pic. <laughs> Man, what the fuck is you talking about? <laughs> Anything on there. I had my son riding a bike in the backyard. The boy said, your grass is dying. Like, what? <laughs> we ride four-wheelers in this grass, man. We mess this grass up all day. We don't care about how the grass look. I'm happy to have a backyard that got grass. But again, to see how life's changed, I feel like, again, I feel like last summer, like, you, was, you just got into it with like, you know, cats from the hood, and you was like, I can't go back to the hood, I'm gonna show you I go back yeah, to the hood. Yeah, just like right before I went to jail, I was feeding into a lot of dumb shit, you know what I'm saying? I'm from the streets, everybody know what I stand for. Like, I like to be able to go home and feel comfortable. That's why I've been raised that my whole life. So, you know, it was just a lot of people talking and making, I guess because I got money now, you know, I'm doing my thing. That still don't mean you can make me uncomfortable. I ain't never gonna let nobody make me uncomfortable. And, you know, I just was feeding into dumb shit, and, as that shit was going on, I started hanging in the streets more. Everybody said they looking for me, and this, that, and the third, and my head, you can't miss me. I'm in this big-ass Rolls Royce. We posted up on this block all night, which was stupid on my end. I always felt like it was stupid as shit. That's why I was in jail. I used to sit back every day, what the hell was you doing being in the hood all day? You know what I'm saying? And you know, we travel so much, and we be around so much fake shit. Sometimes you want to feel like the realness of the streets or the people that really you got love. You miss that feeling. Yeah, you miss that feeling. Sometimes you want to sit on the step with niggas and chill all night and eat crabs and get drunk and shit like that. But you know it ain't like that no more. So you know I just had to change the approach up. Yeah, you just seem like you was not necessarily happy with everything. Like it would seem like even internally with like your crew and MMG like. You call Wale a cornball or something like that. Yeah, I was at Wale neck. He was getting on my nerves at that time. <laughs> <laughs> Wale be at my neck sometimes on the low. He be at my neck, but he was getting on my fucking nerves. So, you know, I had to give Wale a little piece of Meek Millie real quick. <laughs> we apologized, made up like brothers. It wasn't really about nothing. You what know, was that like? Are, like, to, 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 like I was talking about in the intro, like the impact of Rose Red and like even do social media, like getting Rick Ross on that record and then next thing you know, you're flying to Miami and you're becoming part of this new movement. Like, what was, was that like? was like a dream. All this, every second is like a dream, me even being in this position, you know what I'm saying? Rose, when he was putting me on, I don't think y'all niggas, y'all don't see the background of when we living behind and then, you know, rappers, we go through it sometimes, having all this money and having all this shit, we be looking at it like, damn, I really got this shit. 
You know what I'm saying? Even a lot of people think I'm showing off when I be putting it on Instagram. I be putting it on Instagram like, I can't believe I got this shit. Y'all see this shit? That's how I be See that chain? See that Yeah, chain? a lot of people say you flossing, you trying to stun on the people. I ain't trying to stun on nobody. I'm just trying to show you this shit is crazy, right? Look, I got it. I can't believe it. You know what I'm saying? Because five years ago, I ain't had shit. You know what I'm saying? I had the nappy braids. I was in the hood doing my little bit of hustling fresh home from jail. I ain't had shit, but now I got it. I still can't believe it. Like I said on the other interview, I still roll over in the bed, but like, damn, Nikki, what the fuck? Is this still a dream right here? What the fuck is going on? Somebody gonna wake me up? I still do that with Hov and Beyonce, everybody, that shit like that. But what was it like when, like, because I know T.I. tried to sign you earlier and then you had that misstep. Like, when Ross reached out, what made that different? And what made that feel uh, like this Tip is where was, I should be? Tip was rocking with me, but Tip, you know, he was handling his case at the same time. He was back and forth to jail, and at the same time, I had an open case. I was back and forth to jail. It was really a timing thing. You know, when I came home from Ross, when, when I came home, that's when I met Ross like a year later. I was being in the streets. I was in a bunch of, um, a lot of dumb stuff. I was getting shot at. I was on house arrest. We got sh it was a lot of shit going on. I had to exit fast. I felt like I'm gonna die here or go to jail. Ross came by with the opportunity. I snatched that and kept it moving. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it was like right away you like crewed up, right? Like now you gotta get Wale. Like y'all a crew. Like you just put the MMG flag on. I was with whatever. Up. I just told Ray Jose, put me on TV. I'm just trying to be on TV. I don't give a fuck. What we gotta do? <laughs> just put me on TV and I'm gonna get this money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's how it was. You talk about how crazy the, the, the hood is in the situation. Like, a lot of interviews you know before you got past where you talking about, like, you were limited that you couldn't move out of Philadelphia. Like, how, what's your status now? Like, do you feel like you I still I got to live in Philadelphia because I'm on probation. But, yeah. you know me, I stay away more now. You know what I'm saying? I just keep it moving. I don't really be having nothing good going on that could benefit me in the streets. And, you know, I barely get a chance to see my son so, and my family. So, most of the time when I'm home, I'm really in the house, I run around. Sometimes I might go outside, go to my grandma's house and stop, see a few family members, but other than that, ain't not really going on for me. I mean, are we, should we be concerned? Like, you feel like we're not gonna have a misstep like you had last year? Like, what makes you feel like that you're in a great space, that, that situation, those type of things aren't gonna happen again? Shit, I went to jail doing that shit. I don't think I wanna go to jail again. Yeah. We gonna fix that, you know? I'm like, me, I, I think I just was being caught up with kind of like the street shit and the music shit at the same time. I feel like I proved to everybody on the streets who I am. I don't, I'm not trying to be nobody else. I ain't. We did that already. Now it's time to do something different. Yeah. That'd be like, most people that get stuck in the streets are the people that don't want to do nothing different. Like I, I got that from Beanie Siegel. He always tell me, yo, man, coming back before home, that's what brought me down. He told me that, you know, I take heed to that shit right there. Yeah. But there's, but there's still levels to go. Like, you talk about levels in the game. Like, you know, I know you're not satisfied with level. And, like, you know, Nikki, in some sense, is at a higher level. Like, does that inspire you? Like, yeah, you Nikki like, play a big part of the inspiration. Like, just having a girl that's on that level, I can't be letting my girl get all this money more than me and taking care of me. I got to take care of my girl, you know what I'm saying? Even when we at the table, Nikki might got a fucking pocketbook full of money. We ain't letting her pay for the meal. That's just how we rock. We don't let girls pay for shit when we around. You know what I'm saying? So she just a big motivation to me. Like even if one of my friends had a lot of money, that would be my biggest motivation because I know somebody close to me got it, so I know I could get it too. Yeah. So you're cool with everything with the, the, the now getting more comfortable. You saying at first like you felt it was kind of awkward with like you know the kind of the public displays of affection, like showing so much to the public, but it seemed like you finding more of a comfort in that. Yeah, it don't really hurt me. I don't really care what people say about me on that type of shit. You might see my face all balled up. I don't even be ready for pictures when it's time to take pictures. I'm not like a super good picture taker, so you know, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> you know, she be holding me down and shit. She like, she like that picture and shit now. She got fly ass boyfriend. You know, she like to talk about it. She like to talk that. <laughs> So, you know, I got to make sure I hold her down in the same way. I ain't really no internet relationship, boy, boy, you know. I'm going to make sure I flaunt that trophy, too, you know what I mean? It's Nicki Minaj. You ain't going to flaunt that. <laughs>